Okay, so this is gonna be a pretty special video because there was no audio when filming this, but I decided to make it into a Q&A. So I asked you guys in the last video if you had any questions for me and uh, there were a lot of different questions. So I'm gonna answer some of them through this video while I also talk about the bowlers and everything that was going on. The video started off with me donating a chalk bag to Anton, one of my signature chalk bags, the world's best chalk bag. So this was probably my favorite climbing session in a very, very long time. I'm pretty sure I tried all the hard bowlers. And uh, I got my ass kicked on a lot of them, actually. I think there must be a lot of good climbers climbing at this gym. While Anton tries a V5 for warming up, whoop, I'm gonna pull up the first question from my name. Q&A, are you gonna have some professional climbers, comp climbers like Andra Magos in your videos as guests? To be completely honest with you guys, I would love to have uh, both Adam and Megos in my videos. I just, uh, I think I'm a little bit too embarrassed to ask. I feel like I don't really know what they think of my videos. Maybe they think it's silly to make indoor climbing videos. Um, so uh, the truth is I'm just uh, too embarrassed to ask. Um, and also filming a YouTube video takes a lot longer than just like an average uh, session so I think a lot of climbers would be annoyed by I don't know they would feel like they're wasting time uh, recording video instead of actually training honestly I would be annoyed myself too uh, just a few years ago when I was still a professional climber uh, I was so busy with my training and my climbing that I didn't really want to spend time doing anything else so I started on a V7 um, usually I start uh, I don't warm up that much as I've said before but I always traverse a little bit before starting to climb but especially when you come into a new gym like this it's so hard to to warm up for me I don't know I just get I just want to try everything immediately at Dark Patch, we also met up with one of Anton's Ninja Warrior friends Sean Darling Hammond who uh, convinced us to try a uh, campus bowler instead Campusing is climbing without using your feet, for those of you who didn't know. And uh, that and dinos are probably some of the, the favorite moves of uh, Ninja Warrior people. So while you watch Anton and I try the same bowler, I will pull up another question from Roman Kiesel. Question, how did you find yourself being a part owner of one of the best climbing gyms in the world? How much of it do you own and how did you find the capital to invest? Do you think YouTube and influencing will ever be your main source of income? Maybe it's quite a private topic, but it's always fascinating to see how other people have found business success. Ooh, so that's a good question. And it is pretty private, but I'll answer it anyways. So uh, from my time as a professional climber, I tried to just save up as much money as I could because uh, I knew that it wouldn't last forever. And I invested all that money into the climbing gym, which I guess some people would say is a pretty risky move, but uh, it never really felt that way. There are a lot of people involved in the project. I mean, the gym is, is very big, but I own about 7.5%, which actually makes me one of the biggest investors. And uh, YouTube and influencing is actually my main source of income right now. But I'm also completely aware that that's not going to last forever, so that's why I'm trying to invest in more climbing gyms. But back to what's happening on the screen, this V10 felt really hard. Or I guess more just awkward. From Michael Schreier. For the Q&A, I don't think I ever saw you on a moonboard. Would you consider doing a video on it? That would definitely be interesting to watch, seeing how far you can get on the hardest problems. This move right here is so blind. It's like impossible to see what you're going for. And I also have to give credit to Anton for trying like almost all the, the bowlers that I tried. He's not afraid of any bowler and I think that's a great mentality to have. But uh, back to the question, I've never really used uh, training boards that much. And I think if I did, I would probably prefer the kilter board. I think uh, they have a better system and it's also, I, I like the holds better. But I guess the moon board is more popular, so that means that more of you could try the, the same bowlers. Um, so yeah, it probably would make the most sense to have it on a moon board. And uh, I will definitely consider it. So on this black bowler is the jump that I'm struggling with. And uh, that's why I'm trying that move separately before trying it from the start again.
really awkward and balancey top. Okay, next question from Amite Cohen. Hey Magnus, a question for the Q&A. Do you think you'll ever go back to projecting outside something really hard like 9A plus or 9B? I do miss the projecting part, like just spending time somewhere where like life is not so complicated. But as I've said in uh, previous uh, Q&As, I would probably not film uh, most of it if I did. I mean, because working on a project can take, uh, it can take months. From experience, I can see that people get tired of seeing the same route over and over again. Especially if you have a hard project, you most likely will fall on the same move uh, many, many times. I mean, I hope that someday I will go back to projecting, but then I will probably not focus on making YouTube videos about it. Uh, maybe make one video about the whole uh, experience, but not uh, not like weekly videos. So after not being able to do the jump again on the black one, I decided to try something even harder. Uh, this uh, orange V11. And this is completely different. It's very physical and I thought it should suit my style, but uh, it's uh, it was harder than it looked. Okay, next question from Frederick the Pau. Q&A. What about gear? What shoes do you prefer? Rongani Future Products. T-shirts, pants, go crazy and develop shoes. Any future plans? I mean, I'm sponsored by Scarpa, so I would have had to say this anyways, but I really prefer Scarpa climbing shoes. And uh, for future Rongani products, uh, we're making T-shirts and hoodies. Uh, we've been working on that for a long time, actually. And uh, we also hope to make uh, chalk buckets pretty soon. Like chalk bags specifically for bouldering. And when that's out, we'll start working on new products. We don't know exactly what that's gonna be, but I think shorts and pants. That makes the most sense. But uh, climbing shoes, that's probably gonna take us a while to make. So at this point, I hadn't really done um, any of the bowlers that I tried except the, the warm-up V7 and the, the campus. But uh, Sean and Anton decided to uh, do a little competition. And to see who started first, they did stone, paper, scissors. I don't know what that move was, but <laughs> it seemed like Sean wanted to go first anyways, which usually in climbing is no advantage. And of course, they chose a very dynamic bowler. No face 100. First, would love to see a vid of the hardest problems in your gym. Second Q&A. What do you think are the core skills needed to improve from 7A to 7B, B plus bouldering, especially on rock? I think the answer here is pretty easy. Um, I would say uh, finger strength. And that is also a really impressive move by uh, Anton. For the amount of climbing that he's done, he's crazy talented. And I think that's a lot because of his approach to climbing. He's not afraid of trying hard things. And just like flashing V7, uh, without much experience, even though it's a dino and it suits him, it's crazy impressive. They also had a friendly competition on this next yellow problem. This is also a dino, but it proved to be a little bit harder. And while they try this, I'm gonna answer the next question from Mr. Exceeling. Question for the Q&A. Have you thought about joining Mestanas Mesta on NRK? That's a program on Norwegian TV where retired athletes compete against each other. And I've actually been in touch with them. But uh, uh, if I said yes, that would mean one month off YouTube. And uh, as of now, I don't think I can do that. But uh, maybe I'll consider it in a year or two. And that's a pretty interesting knee bar uh, Anson has going on there. Well, that's so close. Okay, let's turn down the crazy cowboy techno music for a second. Uh, here's the next question. From Top Wizard 29 the Gamer. Q&A. What is your favorite type of climbing trick that you can do confidently? And what is your favorite one that you can't do? Um, I can confidently do like front levers and also one finger pull-ups. What I'm not so good at is uh, human flag. I can do a human flag between good jugs, but I'm not able to do it on a pole, like a light pole, confidently. 
And uh, while the ninjas were taking a small break, I went ahead and tried some easier problems myself. Easier than the V10s and V11s that I had been trying at least. Drew Bernard. Q&A, what's the best non-climbing training you can do to improve as a climber while not at the climbing gym? I actually made a whole video about that, I'll link to it. From Weiss Fronts. I guess it's Weiss, because it's German. Hey Magnus, a question for the Q&A. What grade can you send in normal shoes? Greetings from Italy. Oh, it's Italian. Oh, that's a good uh, good question. I don't know. I think it really depends on the bowler, but I on some bowlers, it doesn't make a big difference climbing it in normal shoes. So I think maybe 7C plus or something. Uh, it would be interesting to try for a video. Uh, comment below if you want to see it. I should also add that if we don't show a failed attempt on a bowler, it is flash. Because if I had a failed attempt, I would use it. I love using failed attempts. From Fabi Climbing one question. How was your experience in USA versus the world? What do you think about your run there? I think it was great. I wish I did a little bit better. I When we tried the obstacles, it didn't feel that hard. and. I don't know, I think I rushed it a little bit too much. I should have uh, taken more time on, on each obstacle and, and had a bigger rest in between. I don't know, I was probably most surprised about how gassed out I felt. And um, when I look back at it now, I uh, think I should have done more cardio. I'm uh, not gonna lie and say I'm happy with my performance, but uh, I guess I'm okay with my performance. Okay, back to the yellow V7 Dyna problem now. Let's see if someone can do this. Anton taking one for the team and uh, here actually the microphone started working for <laughs> just a little tiny bit. Okay, one more. Another V9. Looks pretty straightforward. And then we could look for some other V10s maybe. For me. And I, you I, should try a V8. Because you've gone two V8s. Yeah. Or sort of. Okay, question from Bean. Love the recent content, Magnus. My question for the Q&A is, for someone who'd like to get serious into the competition scene, what kind of hardcore training do you recommend? And what did you do to train when you competed? Thanks. I think the biggest difference between when I competed and now is that uh, back then I trained with uh, mostly competition climbers and climbers who were uh, as good as, as me or even better than me. And I think that's the fastest way of progressing because you're constantly reminded of the level you have to be on and you, you have no lazy days where you don't try hard. So this next bowler Anton had tried before, but he wanted me to show uh, him how to do it. The, the first move he had figured out already, but he wanted me to show him uh, the top. Okay, so what I think is uh, so great about this climbing gym is, uh, first of all, the size. Because size does matter when it comes to uh, climbing gyms, obviously. And also the root setting. I mean, having good root setters is like having good cooks at a, uh, at a good restaurant. It's like absolutely crucial. If uh, Anton sticks the first move now, I will pull up the next question. 
from Super Vikand. What are your plans for the future regarding traveling? Do you have any certain destinations in mind? And if so, what is your reasoning for wanting to go there? Love from your neighbor in Sweden. In March, I'm going back to the US. That's the only thing I know for certain. I still don't really know exactly what I'm, <laughs> what videos I'm gonna make there. So if you guys have any suggestions on like what videos to make and who to make videos with, uh, you should comment below. And I would also like to do more bouldering trips, even though I'm not gonna get a whole bunch of views on those videos, because uh, I know that regular outdoor climbing is not what draws the most views. I still want to do it for myself. So I'd like to go to somewhere like Fontainebleau or just go bouldering. It's a lot easier to film than filming routes. You need like a cameraman hanging in a rope. So that's probably what I want to do more of in the future. And by the way, this is when we realized the sound was messed up. <laughs> Sound? Yeah. But uh, we continued filming without using the microphone. But the audio is still so bad that the following clip is probably the only one I'm gonna use. Yeah, we're a little bit upset about this, and uh, Sean bought us some cookies and said, <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> when it becomes bad, you know, something sweet has to come in your life. Yeah. It's okay, sorry guys. <laughs> some uh, wisdom words from Anton there. And I'll play this uh, soothing piano music to make up for the audio in the last clip. Okay, question from Rasmus Carlson. Q&A questions. And this is the last uh, question, or I guess it's questions. What are your eating habits? Also, how did you and Marta meet? Uh, I don't really have any diet or eating habits. I eat pretty much what I want. I try to eat healthy. Uh, but just like a really normal healthy diet I think nothing extreme I also don't eat too much meat and I don't bother with proteins too much because for climbing you definitely don't want to be huge and getting enough protein has just never been a problem for me but I think that's very individual some people need more protein than others so I think uh, diet also is, is very individual besides if you really want advice about dieting I think uh, it's better to ask a nutritionist or something because I really don't know what I'm talking about I just know how my body works and what's good for me and uh, Marta and I actually just started writing on Instagram uh, DMs to each other and then we decided to meet and uh, <laughs> the rest you know and that was the last of the Q&A, but I'll still comment to climbing. And uh, this is when I started uh, trying some hard problems again. Like this problem was just really physical, and you can see uh, this long move, I grabbed the hold with an open hand uh, three finger, because the move was so hard for me. And this part right here was definitely the crux. But this was pretty much a two move bowler, the beginning and the top was not uh, too difficult. I don't know if I've said this before, but uh, pinches are definitely my favorite type of holds. Or the type of holds that I'm the best at. Especially when it's steep, like this bowler. And I feel like I'm the worst at like sharp, tiny crimps. Especially if it's on a slab, that, that is like the worst. So that was a flash, and I'll just show you a couple more uh, bowlers. This next one was probably my favorite. So the cool thing about this bowler is that you can't stop. Uh, the holes are not good enough to take the swing. So you have to continue the movement. And to start with, I thought that I had to go just two times. But I realized after trying it a couple of times that I had to go three times uh, to control the swing. And then I realized that the last move is actually the crux. The jump looks hard, but the last move is hard. The 
cool thing about the jump move is that if you've done it once, it feels easy afterwards. It's like, uh, almost like riding a bike. But the top never became easy. And after falling another couple of times on the last move, I decided to move on to another problem. And this also took me uh, quite a few tries. I, uh, this is when uh, my, uh, my skin and fingers uh, started to feel sore. And I even managed to fall on the very last move. I had to take a little break, so Anton tried uh, one last V7. And I don't know exactly how many V7s Anton did during this session, but uh, quite a lot. And uh, I think yeah, he's only been climbing for a couple of years, so that's very impressive. I, uh, when I go back to the US now, uh, next time, I plan to make more videos with Anton. But I also need more people to collab with, so please leave a comment down below. Who do you want me to collab with in the future? It was getting late and we were feeling sore, the gym was starting to fill up with people. But uh, here is my last try on the purple V11. I gotta say also, making voiceovers like this, it's so much harder than just a regular video. This took me a lot longer than just a normal video. Um, so hopefully my, uh, <laughs> my microphone will, uh, will work again now and I won't have any more issues with that. Okay, very last bowler. This is like a, <laughs> I guess a bonus bowler. And I also want to thank everyone for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe as always. That really helps out a lot. I hope to see you guys in the next video in person and not through this uh, voiceover. Mm -hmm.